Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan, has long been a critic of the crypto industry, calling Bitcoin and crypto a Ponzi scheme, saying that anyone who works for him will be fired if they even trade it. Well, that makes it very interesting that one of the most compelling and interesting projects, Cadena, came out of JP Morgan and was originally a private blockchain at JP Morgan. I talked about this with Stuart Popejoy, who's the CEO of Cadena, and he tells me how they made the transition from JP Morgan, why Cadena is so compelling and interesting and why they chose proof of work to do it. You guys don't want to miss this interesting conversation. Let's go. That's dope. I think what I found most interesting in the research was obviously your history at JP Morgan, since JP Morgan's CEO, Jamie Dimon, of course, is uh, notoriously uh, bearish on, on crypto. So how does that happen? How did you make the transition from JP Morgan? Uh, I mean, the transition happened at JP Morgan, really, because um, my background is uh, working in equities markets um, in algorithmic trading and stuff like that for 15 years before I got into blockchain. So, and I was doing that at JP Morgan and, uh, and then I transitioned into a research group that ended up, um, focusing on blockchain and eventually ended up being the JP Morgan blockchain center of excellence out of which, uh, a bunch of enterprise blockchain technologies came, said this quorum. Um, we were part of the, we were the pilot for what would eventually become JPM coin. Um, so yeah. And at the same time. Uh, Jamie Diamond was starting to make all those comments. So, you know, you had, it's tip, it's not that, uh, it's pretty common in huge organizations that, you know, one part, you know, it's, it's weird to think of Jamie Diamond as one part of JP Morgan because he's CEO, but you know, people asked him his opinion on Bitcoin. He said, thumbs down at the same time, there were definitely traders at JP Morgan who were in Bitcoin. So make of that what you will. You know, Jamie Dimon is constricted by law not to make statements about equities, but he can make statements about crypto. So, you know, you tell me, if you're a trader. But he did go out on a limb and say, you know, anyone who works at my company and has exposure to this could be fired at one point. But clearly that was not the case. A bit of hyperbole, but who can blame him? Also, to be fair, I, I don't like to defend, of course, but... You can make a differentiation between the assets, which he's spoken about, and the underlying technology, which you were focused on at the company. Well, and that was always what people were saying at the time. Um, you know, that, of course, I think fell apart. I mean, private blockchain in general was what a lot of banks, including JP Morgan and, and Cadena's original, you know, impetus was to take this technology we had developed and, and apply it for private blockchain. Um, but... Crypto and public blockchain, you know, so-called public blockchain is what is where all the innovation happened. So, um, whereas, you know, private blockchain use cases are anemic, you know, and, you know, basically exist just kind of to, you know, justify the existence of the group that might be doing it. I mean, they're not, they're not driving technology. And meanwhile, you know, the technology development in crypto continues to accelerate even in the bear, bear market. More so, I think you could even argue. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. In the case of private blockchains, though, why are they so anemic and and basically useless? Because you would think that there would still be a very strong use case, especially for a bank, for example, to have control over that blockchain for their own cross-border transactions, not obviously expanding beyond that. Sure. I, I, I think there was always, I mean, that was what excited us originally was that there was always a possibility to leverage the frankly superior tech of blockchain and superior security to make new kinds of use cases available that simply couldn't exist before. You could have, you know, a, you could have a so-called permission blockchain operating as a single source of truth across as an interbank service that's actually decentralized at that point. Uh, the thing you have to realize is that most businesses don't want to decentralize. Like, I mean, you see enough resistance to it in crypto, right? <laughs> I mean, how much in crypto claims to be decentralized and then because it's just easier or more convenient or for any number of reasons actually isn't decentralized. Now go to businesses where they hold all the cards and you're saying, well, you're going to get all these advantages if you, you know, share with your competitors. 
you know, so that's uh, something like Swift, for instance, the payments network is, you know, is something that banks are constantly, you know, like those represent a source of, you know, lots of finagling and influence where banks want to, uh, you know, our banks are a given bank really wants to exert influence over something like Swift. So they're not like these like harmonious things. They're, they're, you know, they're very, they're very political. And, you know, so the idea that, that, that they're all going to like sign on to a public blockchain and not try to control it. So those, those use cases never got off the ground. And then after that, you know, there's blockchain is, you know, at that, after that blockchain is like, starts having promise for, you know, being a cost cutting thing, but technology that just offers a technology benefit never wins. You know, there has to be some business case. It has to enable some kind of new market. And if it doesn't do that, you're never going to get huge organizations to take all the risk to switch to an unproven technology. That just never, ever happens. So, you know, so in, until, until, you know, so I think some of the interesting use cases that are still going on are some of the, you know, things where people are like trying to, uh, you know, encode kind of complicated real estate trusts and things like that on public blockchain. But again, on the public blockchain, I think, you're always, and for a while, this was kind of its narrative as well, is that, you know, the most interesting things are going to come out of hybrid. We're now more, we're now a pure play, you know, in public blockchain, because that's, you know, because we, that's where our technology has found the most application. And again, you know, the pace of innovation is unmatched. So, um, I think, uh, you know, private blockchain is, is forever going to be, I mean, I think an interesting thing you could say is that there are still a lot of challenges facing the public blockchain tech, you know, things along the lines of scalability and all these kinds of things. So, you know, the kinds of stuff that we're starting to solve now in terms of having, you know, a blockchain technology, like a smart contract technology that can be on a, that you stop talking about layer ones and start talking mm -hmm. about like, how are you going to bring these different use cases to market? Um, whether that's games, whether that's all these, you know, whether it's a bunch of di new use cases that can make sense in Web3. Once we solve those, once we really start showing how those technologies can scale, then you might see it start moving its way back to private blockchain. So that was obviously basically just described, I think, the evolution from private blockchain at JP Morgan to Kadena now, right? Um, but at what point did you sort of see the light and make the decision, okay, I'm leaving JP Morgan. I'm going to yeah, become CEO of this project. We're going to make it a public blockchain and we have a separate value proposition from everyone else. Well, originally it was more, it was a private blockchain thing. And the idea was that JP Morgan wasn't really ready at the time to fully embrace uh, open technology surrounding blockchain. So we left so that we could really accelerate it and start working, you know, they also probably wouldn't be very happy with us working with other banks. So, you know, we started POCs with other banks. We started POCs in insurance, uh, healthcare. We had a, we were doing a lot of work with Humana for a long time, but it was around that time that, uh, they, we started realizing that our technology could scale to public blockchain. And, you know, so that was in 2018. So, so it wasn't immediate. We didn't leave JP Morgan to go straight to public. We had to, we had to kind of uh, get warm public ourselves. And that was a, that was even kind of a slow process. And, um, and it was really, I think the, on the, uh, the arrival of DeFi and, and really, you know, the kind of on-chain technologies where we finally, uh, just cut the cord and said, you know, this is what we're all about because this is, you know, this is really where the innovation is happening and we have something to offer that is different than what people are doing on it, you know, on Ethereum or on uh, particular platforms. And, you know, and, and it's, I think that hasn't changed in the bear market. I think one of the things that has changed is kind of the exclusive focus on DeFi and, and kind of speculative use cases, so, which, you know, that we like that. We like, you know, broadening the conversation and not, you know, and not just talking about the latest hot NFT. I would say it was a gradual process and it was something that, um, I think also the technologies matured in the public space, you know, by the time DeFi shows up, I think it's because people, you know, the, the eco, you know, the various ecosystems really started to understand, um, what was unique about smart contracts and about, and, and what you could really do with value on chain. 
And now that's actually starting to break up in a weird way because of all the layer two stuff. So I think, I think we're entering into a new, I think we're entering into a new phase where it's not clear what the future holds. And so that, that's pretty exciting. So with us, it's always been kind of like wanting to stay close to the innovation and, and where the value is being created. So we've got layer zeros, we've got layer ones, we've got layer twos. As yeah. you said, where does Kadena fall in and what is the unique value proposition that differentiates it from all of these other projects and blockchains that we're seeing launched and sort of uh, gain momentum? I think it's actually, we have a kind of laser focus on decentralization, frankly. Um, it, it's, it, it really goes through all of our technologies in the sense that um, we launched Chainweb as a scalable proof of work, still the only it's actually the only just straight up scalable layer one um, mm -hmm. because all layer one technologies, when they start talking about scaling and let's remember what scaling means. It doesn't just mean going faster. It means going faster without limit, right? In the sense that all of, you know, like people thought when Ethereum would complete the merge, oh, okay, everything's going to be great. No, it did. It's like when they, it's like when they put an extra lane on the freeway, right? Traffic shows up pretty much the next day, you know, and, yeah. and before you know it, you're still in a traffic jam. You got to do something different. You got to have a, you got to have true scalability. And that's what the Cadena blockchain offers because it can expand to meet needs without limit. Um, and it's the only one that can expand horizontally. Anything else you look at has some kind of vertical split, like whether it's subnets on Avalanche or, you know, uh, Ethereum approaching a layer two centric uh, you know, uh, dang sharding and proto dang sharding. What's coming in? What's coming next on Ethereum? Um, or if it's app chains, app chains are also you know there's not uh, that you know there's there's nothing. W so that's one thing. It's just really focusing on scalability without sacrificing decentralization. That's one of the that's one of the main things we focused on in our layer one. But I think what's more interesting. And in, in terms of what is now happening in blockchain is the fact that we have the smart contract technology. That, that's one part that hasn't changed is that we launched with a smart contract technology called Pact that worked better for private blockchain, allowed you to get use cases out uh, in a safer and faster fashion for private blockchain. It's true for public blockchain. And now it's true for layer two because Pact is... Pack technology can be used um, for websites. It can be used for uh, layer twos. It can be used for layer one. And I think what you're going to start seeing going forth is um, when you look at things that li like what Fuel Labs and, some, and Celestia and some of these other people are doing is that there's actually starting to be a focus on what is going to be the unifying technology that allows you to access all of these things the same way. And our smart contract technology ends up being the thing that like, you know, it's like you come to Kadena because of, you know, the fact that we've got unique, decentralized, scaled layer one technology. But then once you see our smart contract language and you can realize what you do, you stay for that. You stay for PAC. And that's really what 2023 is going to be all about. It's going to be, be all, it's going to be all about all the different ways you can use PAC, all the different kind of applications you can do. And the fact that we can do things like optimistic rollups a lot, again, in a more we can actually deliver optimistic rollups as they're supposed to be, right? Because optimistic rollups still don't, you know, they don't, they still don't have slashing. They still don't have a lot of the, the actual, you know, underlying security features they're supposed to have. And one of the reasons why is because it's very hard to move, you know, Solidity is a great technology. We, we've been critical of it, but, you know, let's, let's be clear. Solidity is, is the technology that made smart contracts get to market, right? It's what, brought us all this stuff and something like optimism makes a lot of sense because you can do solidity on the layer two, you can do solidity on the layer one, but because it's such a hard technology to grow, it's such a hard technology to change that you see a lot of projects get to where optimism got to, which is that it's actually really, really difficult to take, to make the hard jump to something like, okay, now we're really doing this, this very complicated interaction. Uh, with Pact, it's, you know, everything about it is, it's easier to understand. It's a safer language. It has formal verification so that you can actually tell whether or not you have bugs in your layer two to layer one. So that's really the message we're going to be talking about in 2023. And you've chosen to stay with proof of work, which, 
you don't often hear people talking about smart contracts and scalability horizontally and moving at the speed of settling, you know, every Wall Street transaction and billions of people. But obviously the claim with Kadena is that that's possible on a proof of work blockchain. So why have you chosen to remain proof of work when obviously Ethereum has made, made the jump and it seems that that is the trend at the moment? Well, let's not forget Ethereum launched in 2015, right? It's 2015, right? Um, <laughs> Or the 2000s, I can, I always get the exact date. So right in there, <laughs> right in there. And We're allowed to ballpark it in this market. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and they launched saying we're going to switch to proof stake in a year. Always. Um, right. And, and I, I applaud them for the merge though, to be clear, that's not an easy thing to do. And, you know, and by, by not doing all the sharding and doing all the stuff, they, they made a very kind of sober technology decision and they execute on it. And I, I definitely applaud them. I think that was incredible, incredible, incredible. incredible. And it was smooth. And it, you know, it was, it was really something to see. And like, and since they been, it also just meant that, you know, you could put to bed all the conspiracy theories, which I sometimes subscribe to that they were intentionally kicking the can down the road and all this kind of stuff. You know, yeah. I definitely think they made mistakes along the way and could have gone sooner, but you know, but they did it. So, you know, so no, the reason why I say that though, is that proof of stake is nothing new. The problems with proof of work are nothing new. You know, this is something we were talking about in 2015, 2016, you know, so we, the reason why we made the choice is that one, we knew that scalability was not going to go away. And two, we knew that you, we could scale proof of work in a way that you can't scale proof of stake because it actually it all comes from the original Bitcoin paper and some of the original sidechains papers. That's the technology we use to scale stuff. It's not new technology. We have just deployed it at an industrial scale and nobody else has because there's no equivalent for it. So it's not, it, it does mean that it's massively more efficient. It does mean that we can go to 20 or 50 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 chains using the same amount of energy. It doesn't require more energy. It, in fact, it gets it's the weirdest thing on earth. It gets more secure, the more chains you throw at it. So you get more for less. So it's an efficient proof of work, the, you know, the, but it's proof of work. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be an apologist for proof of work. I'm not going to try to deny the problems with proof of work. It's just, you know, security, decentralization. You've got to see what you're getting for the work you're doing. And, you know, and so it's, it's, it's a, it's a contrary choice for sure. And it's something that as the packed layer as as we start seeing pack, you know, emerging in layer two, emerging even in web apps, you know, as pack becomes this kind of unifying technology that uh, developers from, you know, all, all over the place are using, um, pack, you know, we start talking about being able to clear to other platforms too. So, you know, I think. I think Kadena, I think the public blockchain part of Kadena starts coming into focus as a particular kind of settlement layer that can preserve decentralization. And that's going to be valuable. It's, but it's not the whole story. So, you know, so that's, that's, that's where that stays. And, and I think the other thing is that there are other things going on with uh, consensus technology in terms of, you know, using things like, uh, you know, zero knowledge things like that, as that starts to make its way into consensus technology that will allow us to, you know, either minimize or eventually eliminate proof of work. But we've always been about leveraging the technology that is proven, decentralized and safe because it's hard to get those three things. Right. The, tri the, the famous trilemma, but usually then it means more expensive, right? Or, or slower. Right. And, and that's the trilemma, right? Is that, you, you know, and, and Kadena is famously the only layer one that solved the trilemma because it's the only one that, you know, that leveraged this low level technology. And then, you know, and so somebody might counter, yeah, but you're proof of work. And I, you know, I'm not, I'm not denying that. But again, we look at the world of crypto as something that is, you know, we're, we're also one of the, one of these people who say like, oh, well, crypto is still young, even though it's not that young now. Um, I think it's it, still young. <laughs> I, I mean, a lot of crypto people do, but you know, some people yeah. say it as kind of a defense and, you know, some things are not so young, you know, like, you know, when the internet had been around for like this long, some pretty great, you know, some pretty amazing yeah. things were happening. Um, so it's right, not think, that yes, young. When people say it's young as a defense mechanism or as an excuse for why we're not at 
you know, mainstream adoption or at scale right. to a billion people. That's, I understand what you're saying, but right. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, something that's uh 14 or 15 years old, that is a technology that could, you know, effectively change everything. It's very early. And also just doesn't, if, if you look at something like a thoroughly decentralized system, there's nothing else like it. You know, there's no, a system that can operate in the wild you know, and that's one of the reasons, you know, one of the things we're pushing for in websites in, in, in terms of using PACT for websites is the fact that PACT has passwordless, you know, login and all that stuff licked. And what's more, you know, we're going to be rolling out stuff that allows you to do multi-sig across, you know, your different devices and just a kind of standard session for web. That's something that like normal web developers don't have good access to right now. You know, so crypto is ahead. It's just that there's been so much focus on you know, it, it's that thing where it's like this, your success ends up being your worst enemy. Crypto is tremendously successful. You know, a lot of money was being made between 2018 and 2022. And so that's where a lot of the focus was. But, you know, people forget, we're still doing something harder than other tech. We're putting a, we're putting a technology in the open where anybody can come at it and making it something that is safe and secure and decentralized. And that's, you know, so I think that is genuinely new. I think it is young. I think we still have like really important debates to be had on the role of decentralization in crypto. And I, you know, and I'm still a maxi on decentralization. I agree. And I think that, listen, there are arguments to be made that for certain things, centralization is better because it's faster and doesn't require decentralization. Right. In this case, I think it's clear that decentralization is the most important factor, but I've always argued that it's a sliding scale, right? I think a lot yeah. of people would say it's centralized or it's decentralized, and they want to be able to put it in one of those two buckets, but it just isn't, right? Even to the point where if you're fully decentralized, but everything's running on Amazon Web Servers, then where Amazon Web Services, then you potentially are relying on a centralized platform yeah. for, for your decentralization. So where do you think it falls on the scale and how do we slowly sort of move towards that true decentralization? Well, one, I think it's that it's, it's being aware of what we're doing right in the moment too, right? In the sense of like, what's going on right now with modular blockchain? You know, so what, what are the technology look like? You know, so one of the things is uh, zero knowledge, right? Zero knowledge. We, we've got a, we, you know, Cadena's working on zero knowledge, uh, you know, uh, stuff for in our wallets and stuff like that. And it's a great technology, but the problem is, is that all the, the dominant, um, you know, the, all this dominant technology using snarks, what's called snarks is ultimately centralized. Yeah. It's, you know, and that's the dirt, that's the dirty secret of ZK, uh, something like optimism, uh, today in effect is centralized. So when you see what Ethereum's moving and, yeah, and even stuff like what Celestia is doing and, uh, you know, and that's a great team, you know, we're, we're paying a lot of attention to them because they're very that, you know, they're very, they're thinking very hard about these things and they're working really hard. Um, but a lot of what they're doing is saying, oh, well, you know, for a lot of things, do you really need stuff to clear out to an L1? And I find it sad. You know, it's one of those things that that's, that's what makes me get up in the morning is, is that's one of the things that makes me want to, you know, give people more ways to clear to the Cadena blockchain because the Cadena blockchain is, is still a classic decentralized blockchain and it can handle the load. And, you know, so it, so part of this is about a, a preserving the ability to have these, have a hundred percent decentralization still be in the discussion when you're talking about L2s and when you're talking about all these other things, because I am a little worried about what's going on with proto dang charting and some of the stuff. I mean, in a way they're moving towards a, you know, kind of just using the, the blockchain as just a time stamper. Yeah. And I get it. I, you know, again, I think the same is being very practical. You know, they're trying to, everybody's, you know, I think what's cool is everybody's focused on the next level of adoption, you know, like blockchain is great. DeFi is great, but how are you going to get like a Facebook on crypto? How are you going to get like a, a world, you know, a world of Warcraft on, you know, uh, Fortnite? How are you going to get something like that? On, you know, uh, working on crypto, you need these layer twos. I, you know, that's for sure. And, and, you know, those things can accept, it's like you're saying, there's a sliding scale though. A game can probably accept quite a bit of centralization. Of course. Um, but you know, the reason why we're so, you know, kind of maxi about decentralization is that 
you know, I, I suspect that it's one of those things that like when things are centralized, I feel like there's other details lurking around the corner that, you know, are going to bite you. And the great thing about decentralization is that it's what it says on the tin. Decentralization brings a whole bunch of other things with it. It means this stuff is open, right? It means that it's like, it's all open source software. It means that you can see everybody who's participating in it, at least in one way or another. I mean, obviously you can use your knowledge. There are ways to make things private on chain, but you know, at its, at its, you know, the, if you, I look back to Bitcoin often, you know, I look back to the sets, the original Satoshi white paper often, because that's how we got here. Right. That's, that's what kicked it off. And there's things about that system, you know, like even when people start to saying that like, oh, well, the solution is we have to move to everything being encrypted. I'm like, wait, you know, hold on. I, I get, I think that's another sliding scale, right? Definitely not everything should go on a blockchain, of course, but I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think there's some, there's some really great things about having open systems where you can see everything that went down. You've obviously made the claim that all of Wall Street could settle at the end of every day on Kadena that you guys can you guys can maintain operations at full scale of anything you could possibly need. That's been a huge problem for others who have made the claim in the past. Right. I well, mean, we've I remember, obviously I, seen blockchains I, go down because a cool NFT project is launched, right? <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. And and you know, and that's again something that, you know, why we're very conservative about these technologies. You know, like Bitcoin hasn't gone down in forever. Um, Ethereum hasn't gone down in forever, you know, and, and this merge was again, like, like Bravo on doing that because like they took a very secure system based on as crypto in crypto speak, a very old technology, which is their version of proof of work. And they moved it to proof of stake, which, you know, proof of stake has been around for a while now too. Um, so I, I don't, but you know, the point being is that, that those are very, uh, secure technologies and, and the idea is that. You know, Cadena is not going, you know, we, when I say that, by the way, also, I say it can settle. That's a big difference. I'm not saying I can host every trade on the U.S. stock market. No way. But that's what we're, you want to talk about that next level where we're talking about modular blockchain. There that's you what you're talking about. Yeah. But like okay. settlement is a whole different story. Settlement is market participants, you know, so market and, and it's, uh, and it's the end of day, right? At best, actually, a lot of stocks take three days to sell, but it's like end of day. So I actually know that our current blockchain could do that. Um, but it's, you know, it's like, it's one of those things, again, you'd have to like, it's, so we can make that claim today and our blockchain can handle it. It's just, I don't think it's going to happen because, you know, stock market settles the way it does. I, I don't think Wall Street's going to be switching their uh, systems. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're, yeah, they're not going to be switching over anytime soon. But settlement, and I actually think the settlement, and you know, and this is again a conversation that's getting more interesting now with a lot of the layer two, and you know, uh, you know, a lot of this modular discussion is, you know, how are you really going to, like, what kind of settlement do you need? And and layer one, I think, is still the best settlement. You know, and and to my mind, proof of work is the best settlement because it's the most decentralized. It's the one that has the most capability and, you know, proof work isn't perfect either. Right. Uh, and I'm not talking about the green stuff anymore. I'm talking about older debates about like, you know, um, you know, miners and all, all that stuff. It's just more decentralized than proof of stake, you know, just inherently there's, there's just a way that it's more decentralized. And it, it, and I think the other thing is that like, you know, there's starting to be more, you know, regulatory attention as we all know. Right. And one of the things that you have to hand to uh, Bitcoin is that Bitcoin managed to jump that hurdle. It managed to, you know, end up in an arena where it's regulatory status really isn't in, in doubt right now. I mean, no, you know, not. you know, we all, <laughs> there's a lot of other stuff that's in doubt and, you know, and, and, you know, the ripple case and, you know, there's all sorts of stuff coming up that like everyone's going to be paying a lot of attention to. But it's but Bitcoin's just going to sit there throughout the whole thing, and that's because it's decentralized. Uh, absolutely, and some would argue we talk about mainstream adoption and being able to settle, you know, billions of transactions and having billions of people using it. I think you could argue that we haven't had the killer app to get us there yet, right? You talked about right. DeFi sort of being a, I guess, a test study for what you guys were doing, but have all also mentioned NFTs, right. and gaming, which leads into metaverse. Do you think that we have 
a killer app in the pipe. You you talked about bringing Fortnite onto a blockchain, all these things right. that have gone massively viral and would really probably spark the next major uh, wave of interest in the in the technology and in the space. Do you think there's anything coming down the pipeline or do you think we're going to just continue right now to sort of test, test the waters, dip our toes in, in each of these arenas? Well, what I'm excited about is that Web3 continues to capture people's imagination. Um, you know, and, and we see this, we see this when we're presenting at like JavaScript conferences, you know, that like, cause you know, we're leaning more into that side of things, uh, these days we're leaning more into, you know, some of the aspects of our tech that are generally ap applicable and, you know, and, and it's not like we don't say we're a crypto company, of course we're a crypto company, but we're, we're talking about some other things and, you know, people are still coming and they're like, yeah, but I'm, I'm really interested in web three. And I think one of the ways crypto is still early is that it still has an early adopter ethos, right? In the sense that like people who come to crypto systems uh, put up with a lot. You know, they put up with a lot of, well, one, they take this, and that's one thing they do. Two, they put up with systems that are strange. They talk about things that have strange terminology, terminology. And, you know, and, and, and by and large, crypto is something where people are interacting with, with kind of a new technology vibe, which means that you know, which is why people stay around when there's a hack for like $600 million or something like that. It's because they're like, well, we're in this crazy world and, you know, we're still trying to figure it out. Um, I think one of the things that has to happen though, is that there, that there has to be a return to a focus on safety, security, you know, assurance, you know, there, you, you have to come back to this idea that like, it's not enough to just go fast, even though that's critical. You have to go fast and you have to deliver something that conventional technology can't deliver. And that is this level of trust that's just way above anything happening in centralized tech. And I think, and that's why I worry about some of the proto dank charting stuff and the dank charting stuff is that, um, you know, you, and again, I'm, they're thinking hard about these things. I'm not, I'm not, I, th it's one of the reasons we're pushing PACT so hard is that we feel like PACT is a very safe smart contract technology and you know, while there's going to be a lot of things you can do that aren't clearing to our proof of work scalable layer one, that's always going to be an important part of the story. And you're always going to be able to keep that as an option because that is, these are some of the things that, that crypto I think has to deliver is it actually has to be safer. And I think that's one thing you can't say about crypto in the past two years is that for sure, you know, is that the user experience is the opposite right now, right? The, the user experience is one of Possible. extreme danger. <laughs> extreme danger, extreme friction, right? right a, extreme risk. I mean, the very fact that we have to have a conversation about things like proto dank sharding right. to me means that we are very far from ready for mainstream adoption. I'm not saying that as a negative thing, but we know the vernacular within our echo bubble and within the industry, right. and we understand all of these things. But I think you make the argument that we don't even want people knowing what an NFT is by the time this goes mainstream. They're just, an asset that they're trading or utilizing right. for something. We don't want them to be talking about DeFi or NFTs or proto dank sharding or right. merges. We just want them to be using it the same way that they do the underlying technology of the internet or their phone. Right. Right. And, and that's also why, you know, I mean, it's interesting that I, I think some of the things that, you know, I think crypto has been moving mainstream forward. I think the whole password list thing that's happening now, well, I'm calling, I'm saying touched, that's yeah. I'm saying that's coming from crypto. Of course, you know, it's not like crypto is doing new cryptography. Crypto has been for a while now leveraging proven cryptography from the past decades. But but we have kind of shown how it's done there. And, you know, and like that's something where, you know, we we know what's going on. We we're experts in that field. But the good news is is that as those technologies come into the fore and, you know, and you see them integrated with a technology like Pact you're going to be able to deliver this experience that has all the security of crypto, but, you know, works perfectly in Chrome. It works perfectly in Safari. It works perfectly in Firefox. And, and what's more, you've seen it before. Like, it's not going to be one of these things like a ledger where it's like, oh, what's going on here? And there's all these weird numbers. It's just going to be your phone, you know? And like, and, you know, and then Kadena is one of the things that makes Kadena unique is that Kadena from the beginning is always really focused on making multi-sig supported by the platform as opposed to supported by the app. So the idea being that 
anything you do on Kadena is automatically multi-sig. So that means anything, you, you sign up for an F on Kadena on your phone, well, you know, you can add your watch to that and you can add your computer to that. And you can get to the point, because remember, that's another thing, you know, I think it was interesting. I, I found it interesting that, um, you know, CZ is always, he's interesting, right? He's always got a, something new to say. And one of the things was when he was actually starting to get critical of people holding their own crypto. I was like, okay, you know, that's not an argument I was expecting to hear in the blockchain. Is <laughs> people be, you know, the, the mantra is not your keys, not your crypto. And here's CZ being like, that's too hard for people. That's unsafe. And he had said the opposite just weeks before, interestingly. <laughs> yeah. You know, he had said he had said that, you know, and, and I think there was a reason to do so. But when we saw the BlockFi's, Voyagers, Celsius, FTX all go down, he said, yeah, listen, get, take, get your money that you're not trading off of exchanges. But he does have a point on both sides. Right. I will say, you don't want your money on exchanges, but that doesn't mean that everybody's ready to be their own bank. True, right? Or there, and there really is no happy medium. So, uh, I, I, right, right. I, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Uh, not your well, there is point. a happy I, medium. I believe that. That's like, there, yeah, the happy medium is again. This is where we have to like, we have to like do something pretty amazing, which is that we have to, and this is something Kadena is laser focused on, is that we have to make the multi sig experience available to the average user, and available some, and easy. And, and grandma easy, right? can use it. Right. Right. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, she's going to have to have some devices, but, you know, everyone seems to have devices these days. So I don't think that's too much. Grandma can use a phone now. I'm pretty yes. convinced. Yes. I'm pretty grandma convinced. Grandma definitely has Facebook. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So it's that kind of thing, like, you know, that it, that we need to, this is something where, again, look, te conventional technology when it comes to multi factor is still iffy. It's still like most oh. of them is SMS, right? Those of us in Which crypto. Is a nightmare. SNL, right. You could argue that having SMS authentication is worse than having none at all. Right, exactly. Once and that's they get in there, it's over. Oh, it's horrible. You know, For so everything. it's it, right. Yeah. So this is something where again, crypto, you know, insofar, you know, multi-sig is as old as Bitcoin, right? I mean, Bitcoin's been able to do multi-sig since the beginning. Um, Kanana was able to do multi-sig right when it launched. Um, and everything you do with PAC is multi-sig enabled. So this is one of those things where it's like, Crypto has the ability to turn it around where it's like today, crypto harder, more risky. Tomorrow, crypto easier, safer by default. Like in the sense that if you're always like, you know, making it that like you've got, uh, you know, you've got recovery codes and, you know, three devices. I mean, that's a very safe situation. And that's something that like, it's hard to get with your bank account today. It's hard, you know, oh, these days awesome. it's... Yeah, it's, it's incredibly frustrating trying to get this. I do think, by the way, Europe is more ahead on these things than the rest of the world and the United States in general. The uh, United States is, wow, just the banking here just moves at a snail's pace. It's so frustrating. Um, so yes. crypto, I think, is where we're going to, you know, it's up to us. We're going to push it forward and we're going to push it forward by, and, and when we do that, that's when we start to make this promise. Yeah, and we, and we make that scalable that's when this problem starts to become real because I still think, I actually still think crypto is a very low level technology. You know, it's, it's something that it's like you said, nobody should know these terms. Nobody should know what proof of stake is. Nobody should know what dank charting is. They should just, they, no one should know what fungibility is. I mean, like that's a weird word. It's just like, right. you know, you pay yeah. for things and you own things, right? And there's these kinds of things and it's the things, it's not what technology empowers them. When you get, Ease of use, scalability, and, you know, and also I think when, you know, it, so I think there are still some like very kind of low level technology maturation going on. And, you know, and that's one of the things that makes it exciting to work at a place like Cadena is, is being able to be part of that conversation. Yeah, I mean, imagine like calling your baseball card non-fungible cardboard or something. It's just so nonsensical to think. And and then everything that is possibly traded becomes a non-fungible something. I just think we have a huge vernacular problem and need to yeah, start no. speaking in terms that the mainstream can understand. How much then, knowing that we need the mainstream and we need retail, which means they need to have a positive outlook on this market, a positive opinion of it. They need to view it as safe and secure. How much damage do you think we've done our industry's oh. uh, self-inflicted wounds oh. over the last year oh god 
Uh, I, I, I'm so glad 2022 is over and I'm just really, really hoping in 2023, you know, that every, I mean, you know, we've got, you know, okay, now we got like, you know, Gemini and Genesis going down now. Um, but I'm, I, you know, whoo, I think it, it was, it was really bad. And I think one of the reasons why it was so bad is because, um, so much focus had kind of moved to all that stuff. You know, so much focus had moved to Luna. So much focus had moved to FTX. You know, they were, uh, you know, they were just making so much noise and taking up so much of the, you know, uh, of Stadiums. the <laughs> Tom Brady, yes. Kevin O'Leary. Uh, yeah, yeah. that last Lamba, Super Bowl. Major League those, umpires. Yeah. Yeah, those Super Bowl goofy commercials. Ads. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it was it was something that I, I think I think the damage is real. I think also the uh, I worry about I'm not somebody who hates the SEC. Um, I actually think coming from equities and coming from working in algorithmic trading where there was big, you know, by the way, big things went wrong in algorithmic trading. Yeah. Right? I mean, huge things went wrong. And yet and and I worked around these traders that, you know, the, in the end. Crypto isn't so different from the rest of fintech. And, you know, and these traders, they grumble every time like the SEC or, you know, or uh, FINRA or some of these other regulatory bodies step in. And it's like, guys, these are the people who are letting you continue to have a job, you know, like, and I think crypto is starting to see that now. My hope is, is that they, they focus on the fraud, you know, and they focus on, there's so much stuff to go after. It's crystal clear. And meanwhile, you know, I want to see the more innovative thinking continue about how we can have better regulatory regimes for these things, you know, because you need a new one. You can't just, you can't just apply <laughs> stocks to crypto. You just can't. How, how we test doesn't apply to a technology created uh, in the 21st century from the 1930s. I think everyone agrees with that. And I think also it's fair to say you can support the idea of regulation and you can even not dislike the SEC, but you can dislike this SEC. Right. Well, I think but there's a lot have... of, but, but, you know, it's, it's a political organization, right? I mean, right. you know, there's a, you know, you, you saw all the, all the Congress, all Congress people, like, you know, every time something like this goes wrong, you know, you, you have people who yesterday were like, why is the SEC slowing innovation in this day? They're like, why didn't they see all this coming? And like, why weren't these people already in jail? So, yeah. you know, they, I think it's going to be the, I, I do think that just like in stocks where, the SEC has actually made it safe to trade, right? I mean, they, they make it, the SEC ultimately protects the market by making it not look like a bunch of wolves, right? You know, it makes it look like someplace that's safe for retail to go. So we need something. And yeah, I don't know if this SEC is the one, but you know, I don't, but the SEC is also something that, yeah, it's an organization that has to survive in the political winds. So, you know, they need to look like they're doing something and, and there's certainly a lot to do. I mean, it's just, there's, there's so much, but you know, the, and then there's some stuff that's more of a head scratcher, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how fast they move. And we'll see also if our legislators and people like that can, can bring out, can start arguing for, you know, can realize the value. Cause I actually think other governments are actually, you know, they're very, you know, you see like statements coming out of Canada or coming out of European governments, you see a lot of embrace still, you know, in the UK, you see a lot of embrace of blockchain technologies. You see a lot of forward thinking. People are still excited about the technology. And, you know, in the United States right now, I think there's, you know, because of last year, we're in a, we're in a tough spot. So, um, so we're just going to stay heads down. We're going to keep working on this technology. It's why we like being decentralized. We know that that's something. Another thing with decentralization is it's just a little bit safer. I mean, in the sense that, you know, something like something like FTX can't happen right. in a decentralized context. Other things can happen, but not that. Sure. I, I would like to think that we've uh, delayed the inevitable rather than canceled it. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's that's our view. Our view is that, you know, I, I just, I'm trying to resist the the kind of also the cliche of like, oh, you know, it's good, you know, you know bear market is good because now we'll really focus on, you know, no, I think it wasn't good. I would rather these things hadn't happened. I would rather, or they, or they didn't happen with such force. You know, I, I think, I think those people really hurt crypto. But having said that, absolutely, it has actually refocused the conversation. You know, and and it has kind of, you know, it's returned to some of these things because 
Because look, one of the reasons why a lot of these things got to, got to where they were, and one of the reasons why decentralization is suffering so much is because, you know, because of these scalability issues or because of these UX issues, like most people hold their crypto on an exchange and exchanges, yes. centralized exchanges deliver this massive amount of value in both directions. They deliver value to the people who want to hold crypto and are, are afraid of this freaking technology. And then they deliver a lot of value to the projects that haven't solved these problems yet. You know, they're actually a very, you know, crypto as we know it is powered by centralized exchanges. It's just the fact. It is. Absolutely. Absolutely so, a fact. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we, it, if you ever, it's almost like if you want to know if crypto has made it yet, well, is the whole story centralized exchanges still? Then no, it hasn't made it yet. Like, you know, like as soon as we get to the point where it's not just, where it's not just like the decentralized exchanges are like everything and then the decentralized stuff is over here. Once this gets bigger, that's when we know we're starting to actually like move things forward. So agreeing that we uh, have delayed the inevitable and that uh, 2022 was massively damaging to the space. What gets us over the next hump? Is it price? Because it's always price, right? For In this market, it's always been prices go up, everybody cares, prices go down, it's going to zero and it's dead. Or is it going to be the Fortnite or the killer app or some game or some use case that we haven't seen? I mean, what do you think could be the catalyst for us to sort of erase 2022 well i mean 2022 of course happened in this macro context right i mean oh, yeah you can't i, I uh, meant more this uh, not not yes it's disingenuous to say that crypto is in a winter when everything's in a winter i just mean right. more the self-inflicted wounds uh to retail and to pers and to the public view of the space after all of these massive collapses in the contagion I mean, I actually think it, uh, and that and now I am going to be the person who says that, like, I'm glad we're in a bear market because I do think it it it, it changes the focus to, um, you know, to to showing how crypto can really deliver something different. And I think that's where you start looking at Web three and you start looking at the way just giving people more ways to work. With. The way I see crypto is you're giving people more ways to work with value. Yeah. You know, like right now on the web, so much stuff is just advertising. You know, you think you're doing something, but you're actually just selling, you know, your, your information is just being bought and sold and, you know, to get something that, you know, you can get in another way, but it's just so easy. And, you know, and, but what's really driving it is advertising, right? So, so we don't have to be so hard on ourselves about the fact that like speculation drove a lot of crypto because, you know, advertising is driving a lot of web tech. So it's, it's never like the, the most straightforward story. So that is one way that I am excited about where we're headed with the bear market is that, you know, the kind of like the easy money thing. Yeah. The fact that there's all this trap capital and people are like, what do I do with it? Oh, hell, I'll throw it in the crypto. You know, let's face it. I think that's part of what created the 2022 situation is just this kind of like, you know, wild environment where people are just throwing money at anything. You know, someone like a, a Sam Bankman Freed, you know, a smart person looks at that and says, oh, I know, I know what to do with that. So now, we get back to these more interesting questions. We get back to the killer apps and we get back to, you know, delivering something differential. I'm personally of the opinion that it's, it, I, I don't see it as a killer app. I see it as an app that ends up being a killer app because it actually delivers these things that, that we're talking about that excite us. Right. But then I think it opens the floodgates, you know, because there's, th this is a, this is a general enabling technology that gives people that gives that puts the power the power of value in the individual's hands and takes it away from the Amazons and takes it away from the Googles and takes it away from you know the big companies and and really gives a way for decentralization to keep going. I mean, something like even something we see with like people moving to Mastodon and how how hard that is. You know, that like how hard it is for people to move off of Twitter. You know, so it could be something like a messaging. You know, it could be something not messaging, but like something like a, a you know being able to figure out how we can, because I think one of the things about Mastodon this hard is that it's, uh, is all the federation and the fact that, you know, you, you don't really know what you're getting into when you join a particular Mastodon thing. So it's like, crypto is interesting because it's got a global outlook. You know, it's like the crypto you use in the United States, same crypto you use in, you know, anywhere else, right? So I think so, it, this is something that like taking that incredible power and, you know, and really giving it to the masses where the masses, you know, 
where where you can say something like not your keys, not your crypto, not your, you know, not your NFT, not your, you know, all these other things that could deliver value. And that actually being something that makes people feel safer and gives them more, even if it's like their personal data, even if it's, you know, like something like Brave was trying to do, you know, where it's like, even if it's about, okay, advertising is important for the web. So let's actually, instead of just saying that users have, you know, writing laws like GDPR, no, we're actually going to deliver that technology. We're going to deliver the technology where it's all on your device and you hand it out as you see fit. And the way you know it works is because it's backed by blockchain. Makes perfect sense. Uh, I love hearing uh, someone who's developing something new, but referencing all of the old and original ethos that we love. And I think that's quite unique in this space. I mean, thank you for that. Where can people follow you after this and check out, of course, uh, Kadena and yeah, so know, Kadena, uh, we're, we're, like. yeah, we're Kadena.io. You know, I'm uh, Kadena underscore IO on Twitter, and uh, I'm Sir Lens a lot on there a lot. Uh, we have Discord, and tele- Telegram, all that stuff, and and, uh, and you know, and the other thing is that if you're, especially if you're like a builder or a JavaScript technologist or something like that, we're coming to a conference near you soon. Um, you're going to see a lot more at the end of this year. Awesome, can't wait. Uh, I'm looking forward to. It. We'll have to circle back at the end of 2023 and see if it was in fact a better year. Absolutely, I. I I'm pretty bullish as far as I have high hopes. Goes. It would take a lot to be worse. I'll tell you that. It's not a very high bar, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Stuart. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, God, it's been great. 